Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Menashe. Happy first of the month. On the first day of each month, we review the book of the month. In order for a book to be considered worthy a book of the month, it has to meet a very simple criteria. It has to be impactful enough that it will either change your life or your perspective on the world. Now, of course, whether it does or not is entirely up to you. If you consume it as a piece of entertainment, you're missing the point. But if you internalize its messages and make them part of you, you have a chance at real growth. And today's book is absolutely worthy of Book of the Month. It is a book called Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. Daniel Kahneman is a professor of experimental psychology at Princeton University. He is the recipient of the Nobel Prize in Economics for his life work in psychology and how decisions are made that influence business, society, and economics. This book is the result of decades of research, including numerous academic papers on how the thought process in the human mind function. I thought this book would be very powerful because there's many examples of flawed thinking in everyday life and certainly in business. Moreover, the book was recommended to me by Ken McElroy, and when Ken has something to say, I usually listen. The concepts at the core of this book distinguish between intuition and deductive reasoning. Decisions made through intuition happen very quickly. They happen in an instant. How is it that the brain makes these rapid associations that we accept with the utmost confidence? Some of these associations are the result of expert skill developed over a period of time. We start to recognize the patterns, and using that expertise, we can draw conclusions very, very quickly. But in order for intuition to work, we have to be in an environment that offers sufficient regularities for those associations and for that pattern recognition to be valid. You know exactly what to do when you're driving and a car hits the brakes in front of you. It's almost instinctive. But if you're on ice, the technique is different. Environments that are chaotic are not candidates for intuitive decisions. For example, stock picking cannot be done effectively through intuition. Yet we often make intuitive decisions with enormous speed and confidence, completely unaware and oblivious to the decision-making process. With things that are deeply ingrained and well understood, that intuitive response happens in an instant. If I say to you 2 plus 2 equals, I don't even have to finish the sentence and you already have the number 4 in your mind. If on the other hand I said 14 times 27 equals, it's unlikely you would have the answer at your fingertips. You would probably switch your thinking process and work through the analytical steps of multiplying each digit, remembering the intermediate results, and then adding them together. Now, Malcolm Gladwell wrote a very famous book called Blink, which I've read, and it's, it's a great book. It elevated those decisions that are made in the blink of an eye as often being more powerful to what sometimes can be analysis paralysis at the other end of the spectrum. Well, our book this month, Thinking Fast and Slow, does not claim that analytical thinking is necessarily flawless or less prone to making mistakes, But the causal associations that the mind often creates when making intuitive decisions are often blatantly flawed and almost ridiculous when you hold them up to the light of day. The author describes two decision-making systems, which he calls System 1 and System 2. At the same time, he recognizes that neither of those systems actually exist in reality. But this system distinction serves a useful purpose in describing how when one system or thinking process is used instead of another, Scientists have been unable to determine or find a part of the brain that involves one form of thinking or the other. We often rely upon context, suggested by associations, to feed that decision-making process. One very well-known psychological experiment shows three letters of the alphabet, the first three letters, all in capital letters. And then a moment later, the numbers 12, 13, and 14. But on closer examination, it can be shown that the letter B and the number 13 written by hand, are precisely identical. Placement of that character in the midst of letters or numbers alters the manner in which we process our interpretation of the character. Why is it that nobody says 12, followed by the letter B, then the number 14? And why is it that nobody says A, followed by the number 13, and then the letter C? These decisions, these conclusions made in an instant and with confidence, involved System 1 thinking we would require deeper analysis to separate the letters and numbers to know whether they're actually being interpreted correctly. Driving a car is another example of skills-based intuition. The decision-making processes associated with controlling speed and steering on a highway are basically effortless. They require no conscious thought unless you're a beginning driver, then you're thinking about it analytically. 
but an experienced driver can hold a conversation at the same time as driving without impairing the driving ability at all. But if you're making a left turn into oncoming traffic, on the other hand, that's not an intuitive decision. It requires much deeper thinking in order to do it safely. Humans often show considerable bias towards using intuitive thought processes instead of that slower, deeper analytical thinking. And that bias can be so strong that sometimes the response to a question involves the substitution of a simpler question for which there's already answer instead of the actual question that was asked. Now, it sounds insane when you consider that some people do this routinely to avoid the more difficult questions. Yet we've all experienced situations, and you probably know people that use that mechanism all the time. We could talk for a long time about the concepts in this book. But with that, I would urge you to go out and get a copy of Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. As you think about that, have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.